Welcome back. So second half of the week found the guys um, working on getting these uh, rudder plugs there ready to pull um, the moulds for the first couple. So here's Zach just um, doing the waxing on uh, one of the inside skins there on the uh, left inside one. So it um, won't be long they'll be pulling the first mould. And here's the other inner side one and that one's already waxed up and in the process of getting the rubber profile um, for the mould just put around the edge there same as uh, the usual procedure so didn't take long for the guys to move through these ones and here's the plug for the left outer uh, rotor skin so this one's already got the top coat laid down um, starting out for that mold so next thing to do on that is just to put some um, resin with the cabo mix around the sharp edges there of the profile and move on to laying up the lightweight uh, fiberglass and here's this other one for the upper straight flanges that one's coming along and I got to run the engine on uh, Wednesday and Thursday evening um, on both of those evenings and just you know really kind of experimenting with it and just finding what else is going on and one thing that was really interesting I found the other day the way it had originally been programmed it was set up um, so the fuel delivery was um, dependent upon the RPM and I couldn't really understand why it was set up this way but whether it was Motec or Ed or somebody else um, who did the original programming for the ECU uh, did that but it was causing the engine to sort of hunt up and down um, when you were changing the throttle setting so anyway I just basically simplified it and just set the fuel delivery um, so it's directly proportional to the throttle right now and uh, that smoothed everything out really well but uh, anyway so here I'm just showing you some of the different screens that are available in the uh, MoTeC One software and you know I'm using all these and learning all these and what they all mean um, so I can understand um, what's happening and it's really interesting to watch um, the the charts here as you go through the different power levels because you can see if there's something um, amiss because it will really stand out and look different from all the other lines so like if the power is going up and everything else is going up and all of a sudden you see something else drop um, you know it's kind of indicative of a problem and you know I did find something uh, earlier but I lost that log so I couldn't show it to you but there's going to be plenty more um, information on this coming out you know as I get to run the engine more but so far it's running running pretty smooth um, there's still a lot more to do and obviously can't run it too hard without the, um, the governor uh, sorted out and those um, seals uh, those seals replaced in the reduction drive but uh, anyway still a lot more uh, to do on the engine but I'm happy with how it's progressing right now and uh, you know I'll get to run it a lot more uh, after I get back from Australia I still got a couple more weeks and I'll run it probably three or four more times uh, between now and then and I've talked before in the past about heating the fuel in the tanks to avoid it from uh, gelling at altitude so this is the uh, heat exchanger that we're going to use and basically um, hot water from the engine is going to run through one side of it and the fuel from the tanks is going to run through the other side but for testing what I'm going to do is hook it up and just basically run uh, instead of running fuel through it you're just going to run some water through um, circulating through a 55 gallon drum and this way um, we'll see how much heat we can put into the the water and also how much heat we can take away from the engine because once we start running the engine up on the test stand at higher power levels the just the radiator we have on it is not going to be enough but anyway um, this will help cool it some more and you'll see more on that later and this is that right side inner rudder skin um, mold and it's had been laid up now um, that one, this is the one you saw earlier so it's got the lightweight fiberglass on there and some peel ply and uh, there's the uh, other one actually that's one of the inside ones and there's the other inside one so those uh, have their rubber profile on those and they're ready to go and likewise here's the other uh, outside one that's also ready to go and this is Friday morning so we had uh, some snow come down and so it was kind of like um, you know they're forecasting one to two inches so we were, everybody was watching in the morning to see if we we're gonna have to leave early and uh, unfortunately um, well we kind of had to do leave around lunchtime but anyway in the meantime uh, Jeff's got the nose fitted um, and clicoed into place there so that's pretty much ready to bond in we're just sort of sitting back and just thinking if there's anything else that we want to do um, before we bond that into place because once it's on it is on and so Friday morning the guys got this uh, other one done uh, at least the lightweight layer so this is the uh, left hand side uh, inner rudder skin mold 
So that one's got the lightweight on it, and here's the one from the other day that's with the peel ply off now, and just a little bit of cleanup, so that's ready to have the heavy layers uh, put on there next week. And here is that upper straight flange plug, so that one got its uh, first round of primer and guide coat, so that's ready for another sanding, and then ultimately it'll get another, um, another coat of primer on it. And lastly, I've been making quite a lot of progress on the wiring. So here I've got the 750 in place now, and I've started to uh, get that all connected. And I've got the 307 there, that's the autopilot head unit that's uh, connected now. Some GPS antennas that I think were added since last time I showed you. Anyway, turn the keys on, and I also have the, um, the PFD now hooked up so it's talking over the RS-232 to the, um, the VPX, the vertical power unit for the electrical system. So I can actually use the PFD, the screen now, to turn um, various different components on and off even you know, prior to having um, the switches on there. And I'll show you that here shortly. Uh, it's pretty neat, the vertical power system, because it shows you not only um, you know, what units that you have hooked up to that system, but also how many amps are being drawn for that system. And you can turn things on and off just on the screen. So even if you don't have a dedicated switch, you can turn things on and off, just like a circuit breaker. So you see down here at the bottom of the MFD kind of map here, you can flick through the different uh, chapters here. So if you go over to VPX, which is the vertical power system there, you can see um, kind of like a basic layout of the system there. So VPX is drawing 2.2 amps for everything right now. Battery showing 12.4 volts. And you can just scroll through the various components that are hooked up to the VPX. And you can turn them on. So they'll just turn on the G5, which is that unit, and that'll power up. And then I can come back and again scroll through some more and you can see you know as you turn something on you can see how many amps so that one was drawing I believe 0.2 amps there and um, there's a 24 drawing 0.1 amp and this is the GSU and that's the Adaha system so turn that on and it, it draws 0.1 amp and uh, there's the 750 I turn that on so that has two two different sets of power one for com and one for nav and actually there's three different sets of power there's a main power in there as well and it takes a minute for that one to fire up but uh, you'll see shortly once it's booted up and so what else we got here I think I can uh, go through and turn on the other display which is the MFD yeah right there I can turn that guy on and you'll see that one will boot up so, but all these are going to be hooked up to the avionics master switch. So when you throw that switch, uh, they'll all basically turn on at once. But you know, then you have the ability through the um, through the um, PFD there to actually turn things on and off independently if you want to shed load. If for some reason your battery is running down or the alternator is not charging or something like that. All right. So next up, I'll show you. Uh, let's see the um, autopilot head unit. This is the GMC three hundred seven. You can see there. It's actually kind of a backlighting on there that's not on right now. And I'll show you when I turn that on, you'll see it light up there. So I'll just find it in the list. Uh, it's down to the bottom there. So keep going back up a little bit. And let's see, we're looking for the 307. There it is. So I'm going to turn that on. But before I do, I'll just put the camera so you can see what the difference is there. So just watch around the outside of that heading bug there. You'll see it sort of light up. There you go. So that's kind of ambient lighting that comes on there on on the various different buttons light up um, yeah so and then you can see total amp drawer for the whole system is seven amps here which is not bad really um, with everything that we have and there's still more things to go to turn on but most of them don't use very much power because they don't have screens or anything like that all the heavy duty stuff the MFD and the 750 um, PFD MFD 750 the ones that use the most power so uh, anyway, that's pretty neat that I got all that configured. And it's just a bunch of all these different um, hookups between different units that I'm just sort of working my way through the list. And I think I'm about two thirds of the way through all the wiring now, um, all the main wiring. So that's good. You know, I still haven't done anything with antennas and stuff. And, you know, I haven't had much of a chance to play with all this stuff yet. Um, you know, I've never flown on a um, 750 before. So that'll be fun to have that. I've got you know quite a bit of time with the other Garmin avionics, the 530s and 430s and stuff. But uh, anyway, it's going to be fun to be able to uh, learn how to use all that. Not that it's much different than the rest of the stuff. And you can see my wiring looks like a bit of a mess in there, but everything is laid out sort of caref carefully. Um, it's ultimately all going to be bundled into just various sort of runs together. 
and this is all the wiring that, that's going to run down the back of the aircraft there I just sort of um, got every separate run there in its own little loop um, so they're just sat on the top of each other so it looks like a mess but it's very well organized at least um, I think so <laughs> for me I can understand what's going on so anyway I'm making good progress on that and I'll still continue to do that um, next week and and uh, push towards getting you know the majority of the wiring done before we go to Australia anyway I'll leave you uh, with a little bit of uh, the rest of the snow in the afternoon before I ended up leaving the shop and as you can see everybody else had already left and I think I ended up leaving at about four o'clock or something um, anyway that's our update for this week and thanks again for watching